This, is a, this film is part of a series of projects that we're doing to look at making feed and poultry feed in particular uh, a bit more sustainable. And the key issue here is substituting soya for homegrown crops. In this particular film we are looking at the potential to de-hull homegrown peas and beans. Um, and that's a process by which we can improve the quality of the protein and therefore reduce our reliance on, on soya. We're here um, at, a, at Hammond's End Farm in, in Hertfordshire uh, and we're going to visit a, a, um, a de-hulling machine manufacturer uh, in, in Wiltshire to find out a bit more about de-hulling, uh, to find out a bit more about the, the benefits of de-hulling and to have a closer look at the de-hulling machines themselves. But first, we're going to ask the question, why de-hull? There are two main benefits from de-hulling beans and peas. The first thing is uh, to improve the nutrient value of the beans and the peas. The hulls of the beans and peas are low in protein and energy. They're also high in fibre, which makes them hard for poultry to digest. So if you can take off the hull of beans and peas, the seed that is remaining is of much better nutritional value. The second advantage from taking the hull off beans and peas is the hulls contain anti-nutrients and uh, these aren't good for poultry so poultry nutritionists will tend to limit the amount of peas and beans that they will put in their formulations. If you can take away the hulls then poultry nutritionists will include more peas and beans in their formulations. There is one disadvantage uh, in that if you take the hulls off of beans or peas, then the yield of the crop that's remaining is decreased. So it's very important to find an alternative use for the hulls. Uh, some of the ideas that have occurred to me is they could be used for poultry uh, litter or for pet litter. Uh, some may be suitable for feeding to ruminants or they could go to, if the volume's sufficient, power stations will buy them. Welcome to Hammond's End Farm. Um, just a little bit of an introduction, I suppose, before we look at this de-hulling machine. Um, we're a relatively small organic arable farm, 270 acres, uh, here in Harpenden and in Hertfordshire, uh, on what you'd call, I suppose, medium-heavy uh, soil. Uh, so a little bit uh, sticky underfoot at the moment. Um, and uh, I think the best thing I can do is to say, well, Join, follow me along here and we'll go and have a look at that de-huller. I can explain a little bit of how, uh, how the whole system is integrated. We have a, an elevator here um, uh, uh, that takes the grain from a pit outside and then it drops the grain straight into the hopper here of the de-huller, which is basically um, a, spin it, a, ro a, a series of tubes rotating at high speed that throw the grain against the edge of this. I bought the dehuller about 18 months ago now for uh, the, purely for the purpose of dehusking and dehulling spelt wheat, which is quite a major product for us. Um, today, of course, we've been uh, going to try some uh, beans uh, and some peas. We'll see how, that, how we get on with those. The product, once it's dehulled, in other words, the shell taken off it, comes down this cyclone system here and husk, grain and everything is taken up the elevator here and goes through an aspirating system up there which blows some of the light husk away into a trailer outside and then by uh, a, a series of pipes ends up in our um, grading come cleaning uh, machine here and then the clean product is taken by another elevator and taken either into a trailer that loads out of the pipe down there or taken into some silos next door. The, uh, we have an inspection. We find that with the dehusking um, machine that the, you have to keep monitoring uh, the, sa the sample that's coming out. And to do that we, we can check it here and the speed of the dehuller, and that is the key factor of how a dehulling machine works, um, we can vary that speed uh, infinitely uh, by turning this uh, knob here. The 
So what we find is we check the sampling probably about once every half an hour just to make sure everything's going well there and turn the, the speed up a bit or down a bit accordingly. The problem with spelt is if you have too high a speed it can not only take the husk off but it can also uh, damage the grain. You can end up with split grains so that when I'm selling that grain to a miller he uh, might start to frown a little bit at that and, and knock the price down and we don't want that. So that's a sort of a bit of a whistle stop tour through um, the way that our dehulling machine integrates within our normal grain handling system. In dehulling we've used uh, rape, linseed, sunflowers, peas, beans, oats and barley. The throughput of the machine is uh, around two tonnes an hour. It varies quite a lot on the seed you're processing and how hard the holes are to get off. It's quite important to regulate the feed going into the machine to make sure that you're getting a good hollow process. If you go too fast, it floods the machine and you won't get a good process from it. So control feed is really important. And this will vary with what seed you're processing. The other important variable is the speed of the hollow. This can be very critical if you go too fast, you smash the seed to pieces, too slow and you're not dehulling it efficiently. Whatever speed you find that you need for the dehulling process, you then will find that you're not 100% dehulling. So that's why the cleaning process is essential to follow on to it. I think the important thing is to do the experimental work, testing out what speed and what cleaning you need, getting the right screens, then you can get, ensure an efficient process.